Okay, good morning. I want to talk about this book uh, that is Sculpture nella città. Sculpture nella città, Spoleto 1962. Giovanni Carandante. It's Carandante. And here is this book. Sculptures of the City, Spoleto 1962. And um, the author of the book is Giovanni Carandente. Um, he was born in the early 1900s. He died in um, uh, 2009. He was a Roman, a Romano. He was an art critic, an art historian. He, um, his specialty was post-World War II, I believe, and um, which would have been, what, 1945. And he loved Spoleto and he loved art. And he had many, many contacts in the estates in New York with the up-and-coming artists of the 19, 1950s. And he then had this idea to try to blend this historical Renaissance village with a castle, La Roca, had a huge ten arch uh, bridge, uh, uh, an aqueduct that has ten arches in it that brought water into the castle. It had a huge Duomo. And the year that they had the Festivale di Due Mondi here, which I think was the first year, was 1962, this fellow brought in all these artists from around the world to present their art for the Sculpture de Nella Città. My understanding is some little tiny video clips were made and you can find them on the internet. Many photographs were made, a lot of media, but it was really, if you could imagine, this Renaissance village and walking through it, and they stuck all this modern sculpture, and I mean things that were very abstract, things that had, they were nothing but shapes, shapes and textures and weightings, and we'll take a look at some of these, and this book is written in Italian by him, has some translations in English, but I... The translations are not good, so I'm going to work on seeing if I can't restore it. But this gives you an idea of the Duomo, okay? And here they put this modern sculpture, and then over here you can see a couple of modern sculptures hiding in the background. Here's another one right back there. I, I can't imagine how wonderful it would have been to have been walking the streets of where, and here is the fellow himself, right here in the middle. Well, there's a modern sculpture during that 1962, and here is Giovanni talking to some of the artists and other people. Um, let's see if I can find some more. Um, I can read Italian, but with a lot of problems. And, and here's one, here's Beverly um, Pepper. Uh, an American, a very famous American artist, and she's, you know, hugging him, and you can see the old buildings, but then up here, you've got one of those sculptures that is from that period of time uh, that was in this exhibition, and the entire city was taken over. Love this one. This guy's totally famous. He's an Italian, and his art, he is, um, it's in Piazza del Mercato, Pietro Consagra, but he has his art collected by Tate, by MoMA, and by, um, I think it's the Guggenheim collects his art. But you can see this modern sculpture. So, the city was taken over. Okay, here's a picture. <laughs> it said a couple things about Alexander Calder that was kind of funny. Look, look here, here's Alexander Calder sitting with one of the iron workers. Uh, where he got his uh, very huge sculpture put, and that still stands, in front of the train station. And it's Teo de Lapio, Teo de Lapio. You know, I'll have to figure out what the translation of that means. T-E-O-D-E-L-A-P-O. -E -E well, it says that, like here, these, these are golden nuggets, but because it's not translated into in English, people don't get this, that when Calder originally designed the uh, Teo de Lapio, which is at the train station, a huge sculpture. When they put it up, they realized it wasn't going to be able to be strong enough and dynamically stable to maintain the winds of the cold winters here. So um, they called him up, and supposedly he got pissed. And he goes, gosh darn it, all right, fine, I'll come to Spoleto and I'll look at it. Because what he did was he made a small model, he meant, sent the model to the iron workers, he said, now make it. Well, once it was actually built and constructed, 
uh, the workers all said, or the city, whoever said, this is not stable, this could blow over in a wind and cause problems. So then, in fact, he had to come and he had to redesign that. And again, you got the Duomo in the background. So, all right. Um, Let's see if I can't read a little bit. Now, what I'm going to be reading is written in English, but because it was translated from Italian by somebody into English, they've made some mistakes. They've repeated themselves, and it doesn't always translate well. So I'm going to go ahead, and let's see if I can get the light on it. In the wake of a certain small number of limited publications, this book intends to present itself as the definitive tribute to that once-in-a-lifetime experience that took place in Spoleto in 1962, still known and remembered as the exhibition of sculptures in the city. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing thing. It therefore republishes the text which I wrote at the time for the magazine Spole Spoletium. So this particular man wrote a lot of pieces, and um, uh, Giovanni, and it republishes them, and which appeared almost simultaneously with the opening of the, um, with the opening of the, let me see, of the show. A text with the verve of contemporary running through commentary. A number of photos have been drawn from magazines of the Insider Corporation which sponsored the undertaking. The extraordinary photographs of Ugo Mules are likewise reproduced here and we have chosen to flank them with my intro, intro, introductory, introductory, see sometimes the English translation, or introductory text for the volume that appeared in 1992. Una città pieno di sculture, a city full of um, sculptures is what that means. Now, nearly impossible to find. That title was borrowed from the American journalist William McHale, who used it in Time magazine. So at some point in time, I'm going to go back and I'm going to research and find that Time magazine article for the re, the, the reemergence of this where he told the story of the exhibition with extraordinary passion. It's fitting to remember that his article appeared only a week before his death in the crash of Basquiat, B-A-S-C-A-P-E, Bascapate, not far from Pavia. And he was in Enrico Mattelli's airplane when the crash happened. So this guy for Time Magazine wrote this very, very, very passionate story and then a week later, it was killed in an airplane crash. E Ital Sider, Ital Sider, which is the name e I T A L S I D E R, is the name of the company that paid for a lot of this. In the act, in an act at the time of unprecedented patronage, not only took on the greater part of the costs of this heavy-duty overland transportation but also placed the facilities of its various plants scattered up and down the peninsula at the disposal of 10 of the greatest modern sculptors from Italy, England, and America. So for the sculptors in the city, Giovanni had arranged with this um, company that was a transportation company. It somehow arranged that 10 sculptors, sculptors, sculpturers were invited to be the honorary, honorary guests to have a sculpture built here in Italy at these plants, and they picked different locations where they could build their sculptures. This company sponsored all of this and then put the sculptures in pieces on vehicles and transported the sculptures to, to Spoleto and then had this, the sculptures erected. So this was an unprecedented thing at the time of sponsorship. Okay, from Bagnoli to Piombino, from Lovere to Cor Cornigliano, from Savona to Voltri, the, okay, these are different cities in Italy. The plant in Voltri was needed to grow famous, indeed to grow famous as its history of the 20th century sculpture. So one of these locations became very famous for having sculptures, thanks to the series of 26 works which See, this is where the translation isn't right. 26 works which, and then you go to the next page, okay, which David Smith constructed there in less than one month. 
So one artist, David Smith, had constructed 26 sculptures in one month at that location, each simply entitled Voltri, V-O-L-T-R-I, with the place name followed by a Roman numeral. So Voltri numero uno, Voltri number two, Voltri numero tre. The artists were invited to work in Ital Cider Steel's Mills. Okay, so Ital, Ital Ciders, now I'm seeing, was a steel mill with different locations in Italy. Ten artists were invited to use the facilities, create the sculptures, and then Ital sponsored for the sculptures to be ported, uh, transported to Spoleto. Um, and this was in 1962. There was the background of the story this was the background story of so many of the monumental sculptures that were then to adorn Spoleto streets and squares in the heart of Umbria. And some of those works have remained here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this video for now. Um, I'll come in and read the rest and we'll work through it. But I wanna to try to find all the pieces of this story because what happens is in, in 1962, something really special happened here and there's been these isolated moments where this reassurgent, I mean, there's something about this place. I've been here in Spoleto five years, almost five years. And I tell people, you gotta be careful because when you come here, you don't realize it, but you start to grow roots and it's, it's cold, it's not where you wanna be. And sometimes the people are a little closed-minded, but they're really good-hearted. And you wanna be near the ocean, you wanna be where it's warm and not where I'm freezing right now in this park because they don't turn on the heat. But something happens where you start to grow roots. <laughs> As your roots go into the ground, my joke is we all turn into Tartuffi, which is what this land is famous for. It just kind of traps you and then locks you in. And you really do fall in love with Spoleto. It's, uh, it's something that is really, really special about the city. But you know, you keep in mind that there, there, there were Etruscans here and the, the Renaissance people were here and all the different pape or different levels of popes. I mean, it, it's just been a city that constantly entraps and steals your heart. And it entrapped and stole the heart of many, many um, modern artists. And I want to try to pull that story together. Okay, ciao.